Our guest in this segment is the Senate president, one of two who get to sit uh, elevated up behind the governor during the speech. So you always see the facial expressions of the Senate president and the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House is Roger Hanshaw. The Senate president is Craig Blair. He joins us this morning from Charleston. Craig, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob, John, Matt, and all your listeners. Good morning. Hey, I'm surprised I just made it through last night without going into a sneezing fit. I've got the Capitol crud here on Tuesday, <laughs> and I've been fighting it. So I've been, I was wondering whether I was going to get, start sneezing. If I sneeze once, I sneeze 15 times. Well, I'll tell so. you, I watch you a lot when you're behind the governor on these State of the State speeches. Because I always want to see what your expression is as the governor says the different things that he says. So toward the end there, it looked like you had a bit of a wry smile on your face over the last 10 minutes or so. Do you, do you, uh, do you recall what was going on then? Uh, I could recall. Here's what I was doing. I was watching the two finance chairs, the one from the House and the one from the Senate, and watching their expressions <laughs> and all that. And me being the former finance chair, I know the difficulties. And there's a lot to unpack in what the governor said last night uh, when it comes to what he's wanting to do. And so I was watching their faces. And so that's probably what that was about. Could have been the dog coming down the aisle. Uh, there's a host of things on that. And my face is not one that you want to pay attention to to read uh, on that because sometimes I look like I'm mad about something and, and I'm I'm just thinking about how to solve something. So to a greater degree, though, I think I was blocked out last night. Somebody sent me a text and said that uh, that I was blocked out uh, so you couldn't see me. So I got a big smile on my face about that. <laughs> well, I saw enough of you toward the end when he was talking about uh, adding a few hundred million to the budget there. And Senator Tarr who is the Senate Finance Chairman, has already come out strongly opposed to the governor's proposal for new spending. And he listed those toward the end of his speech yesterday. Your thoughts on those proposals, Craig? Okay. First of all, at 830, my members will be caucusing here in the Senate, and we'll be talking about last night and not preparing for our day. But we can go down through some of these and, you know, the 5% pay raise for the teachers and the school service personnel and the state employees, uh, that's going to be $175, $200 million uh, when you factor in of all the other the benefits, the, the taxes that come along with that. You know, it increases PIA, it increases the uh, – the, um, pension system, what your contributions to the pension system. Um, so, but we're, to a greater degree, uh, I think that we're all on the same page for that one. Uh, when it comes to the um, reduction for the tax on Social Security, $100 million, I need to, to excuse me, under $100,000 is already that way. Okay, if you're under $100,000, of we as a couple, fifty thousand dollars as an individual, then you're not taxed on your Social Security in the state of West Virginia. Uh, but I don't know what the price tag is on that above it. But keep in mind that also that there was a twenty one point two five percent reduction on the tax that would have been over that hundred thousand dollars. On them, so mm -hmm. I do, we got to go and find out what the true cost of that is, and whether we can manage it. Okay. Um, and to, to, and so it's it's a little bit premature for me to be saying yay or nay on anything, and I, I don't want your listeners to think that it's a yay or nay. Uh, but we've got to be able to um, d do what we've done in the last five years, and that is, is to be able to manage our revenue streams in such a way that you can actually have a return on investment that allows you to do some of these things. It seemed like a math problem to me, and I presume that he had already consulted with Larry Pack uh, in regards to whether he could afford to do these things or not. I'm just assuming that. But if you've got a 10% state income tax already kind of programmed in with the math and the way the revenue uh, surpluses are going, I presume that's going to kick in and a 5% pay raise, uh, then you start to kind of get into, well, of the rest of this, can you afford all of that? Uh, what if something happens revenue-wise in the second half of the year that's unexpected? 
So it becomes a little tricky. Yes. And, and, I, and again, I've been there before on being able to manage that uh, as the finance chairman, and I still have a lot of interest on what's going on. In fact, I asked for him to hand the budget back to me at the beginning of the state of the state, but then I thought, okay, this is going to be a little bit rude if I sit there and go through the budget while he's giving me state of the state. So I set it down and didn't do that. But I was as curious as that you can – Become And I knew a lot of what was going to be in there, but state of the states, no matter who the governor is, is that lots of times there's surprises in there. Uh, they, they, they like that surprise factor mm-hmm. uh, of what's going on. Now, here's one that I've got grave concerns on, and that is, is that when it comes to Medicaid and uh, increasing the provider tax, so that we can actually have more money and, and close the gap on the or to close the Medicaid gap. Uh, I've got some concerns about this one, and the reason for it is, is that when you take federal dollars, then what you're going to do is put yourself at risk to having the federal strings saying if you take these dollars, then you got to provide abortions or, to, you know, the list goes on. And that is not in our DNA in the state of West Virginia, and we won't do that for those dollars. And there's been discussions on both sides of that. Maybe we can do it in such a way that we can put language in there. But the last thing you want to be doing is taking $100 million from the federal government and then it undermines the will of the people in West Virginia, and we don't we don't want to do that. That one is a big concern to me. Uh, so keep going, John Gilstrap. Well, I'm just going. I I hope I got these numbers right. As I was seriously typing and I was listening last night, we're looking at 100 million dollars for hospitals. We're looking at 150 million dollars for the school building ad, uh, administration authority. Authority. Um, there's just there's a lot of big numbers here. Ten million for firefighters. The uh, how much of what of what you heard last night came as a surprise that yesterday, as opposed to knowing that, that this is this is on, on this is flowing toward you. Most of it was not a surprise, and what it is, it's hard to understand these numbers uh, if you're not dealing with them all the time. A lot of what he was wanting to spend on is taking excess revenues of or surplus revenues, and those are two different things, believe it or not. Uh, if it, but if you're on the street, well, you think, well, excess revenues and surplus revenues are the same thing. No, they're not. Uh, but how we go about managing that, um, and if it's one-time spends, which a lot of this is, uh, and that's where right now I've got people working in finance, breaking all this down so that we can look at it. I know that you know there's a one-time $100 million allocation for uh, congressional earmarks and flood relief. That's drawdown money. Uh, There's a one-time $50 million uh, expenditure for contract nursing for the state facilities. And I've got some concerns about that one as well. Uh, But, you know, it's how we go about managing it. The $30 million for tourism, I don't have too much of a problem with that. The money that we've invested into tourism has a return on the investment and is Proving itself, Chelsea Ruby is fantastic uh, on and her teams that they work on. So, so to put to put this into perspective, take just randomly the 150 million dollars for the school building authority is that 150 million more than we've seen before? Is that the total budget that he's proposing for this year? Oh my golly, I, I, I don't have the answer to that. Okay, uh, to, and I would assume that that's the total. There's a formula that goes into that, and what it may have been is is that he he looked at that, and, and see, that's where, again, when I said we got to unpack this, that is you got to be able to look at the nuances of on it to find out whether it's there. You know, one of the things that we are looking at doing, and he mentioned something, $5 million for charter schools. And we have been talking about making it so that you got a million or $2 million in for the school building authority, but for 
charter schools because what they do is they go and take old schools and create a charter school in them. And sometimes you want to be able to help them. And they're public charter schools. I know that will get the unions wound up. Frankly, I don't care. Uh, it, it makes it so that uh, we got a competitive environment for education in the state of West Virginia. And it's working. Matt Harvey. Senator Blair, the, the child care tax credit that the governor mentioned, that is, I believe that is something that you and uh, Speaker Hanshaw have uh, publicly stated that you would like to see accomplished this legislative session. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and it's all about how we do it. And we took a, a big bite at that last year when we uh, did the tax credit for big corporations uh, to be able to come in and put child care on site or be connected. So they have, we'll use Proc and Gamble, Clorox, and CMC. And they all wanted to get together and create their own daycare. I'm, t- I'm sorry, I'm old school. And uh, you'd allow them to do that and to be able to do a tax credit for that. You could put it together or you could do it separately. Uh, but it makes it so that it helps with your employers. It, it's turning into a benefit for the younger younger group. So uh, we're, trying, we're looking at expanding that. Good, good, good. I think that's a critical need in West Virginia. Um, the $50 million in the state ag lab. That's some, that was something new to me that I hadn't heard. Do you have information on that? I'm well aware of that. Uh, that, that was a uh, that that was a workout of uh, that has been take took place of uh, months ago. And what we did was we put $250 million, and first they were called the Consolidated Labs. Then we broke them up, and then uh, Eric Gates. Gage, excuse me, uh, was in my office and was talking about uh, wanting to be able to have an agriculture program at West Virginia State University. And I was like, well, I don't know exactly how we're going to come up with $70 million to be able to do this. It was a couple hours later uh, that we called him back and said, we think that we've got a plan. Uh, and that is is that we partnered the, the lab's for agriculture with West Virginia State University, which provides a feeder system of interns and and lab assistants or, or lab technicians. And being that we're a small state, this is the perfect way to do it. And ultimately, we're redoing our labs across the state. Uh, and so that $50 million, I'm not even sure, sure that $50 million even comes into play that that factors into the budget. In fact, I'm pretty certain it doesn't because we already allocated the money to be able to manage that before. Is there other instances of what the governor's listed that he'd like to see money spent on that's that's money that's already been allocated? Because I, I roughly got like $450 million in, in uh, items that he would like to see spent on, plus you add – the uh, the eliminating the Social Security tax that's another hundred million. You're getting close to seven, eight hundred million dollars. Yep. Uh, how about not let me answer that question right now until we've again unpacked everything? Uh, because I don't want to say negative stuff or positive stuff until you actually know where the money's come from. And, and how it's being managed. Uh, Brian, the governor's chief of staff, has told me that uh, we're in good shape for being able to do this. And Brian is a part of the team that we all work together on on figuring these numbers out. Uh, and so, let me. I'm, I'm going to avoid that question. I'm sorry. Uh, Senate President Craig Blair is our guest here on the program. Uh, Craig, I was uh, impressed early on in the speech when the governor mentioned the uh, seven or eight different companies that were either coming to West Virginia or were here being retained and then adding on in jobs and investment in the state. And these uh, particular companies are, if you're throwing a dart at the the, the state of West Virginia, <clears throat> you know, the map of it, uh, are in much are geographically uh, diverse around the state here. And this is good news when you're trying to raise the economy and the income levels of West Virginians all around the state and not just here in the eastern panhandle. Yeah, 
Yes, I, t- I, t- I think you're just teeing that up for me to go in. To I am. My diatribe. Um, that, 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 100%. Uh, That's and, a softball. And, and Yeah, if we want to be able to keep our tax dollars back in the eastern panhandle, we've got to be able to lift the rest of the state up. And that is with the job opportunities. And, to, and frankly, you don't get to tell corporate America or to whoever it is where you're going to locate their business. They are wanting to go where they want to go. And you've got to be able to make it attractive uh, for them. We've done that in the state of West Virginia, and we continue to try to look more attractive to be able to get these businesses in here. And then when there, then there's anchor businesses, and anchor businesses like a new core or a Procter & Gamble. So much investment is drug along with that. And, and so we love those anchor businesses to be able to come into the state of West Virginia. And, and we've... Central West Virginia and Southern West Virginia are the ones that are toughest, but we're getting the growth areas along the Ohio River is turning into a growth area. North Central West Virginia, that's the Bridgeport, Clarksburg, Fairmont, Morgantown. It's on fire. Uh, there's all kinds of businesses coming there. Uh, and, so, and then we all know in the Eastern Panhandle that we're doing fairly well attracting the businesses there. And you can't have uh, a well-rounded tax base without having the businesses. Otherwise, you become a bedroom community like the Eastern Panhandle used to be. We used to be a bedroom community because the, the Procter & Gamble, or excuse me, the 3Ms, the GMs, the Cornings, the, the DuPonts, they were all taxed out of the state. They left our state. And we've, we've turned that around. And then we're repurposing those properties now. So, Yep, thanks for teeing it up. I hope I did well enough with my hoarse voice uh, on that. But it's working. The The formula of success is working, not just for the Eastern Panhandle, but the entire state of West Virginia. Yeah, I'm going to give you a, a B, uh, to B plus on that, Craig, uh, the voice aside, just because you had to ask if I was actually teeing you up or not. Craig Blair, oh, pre-head yeah. cold, would have known that right away. <laughs> hey, Craig, yeah, well, it's a long day. Uh, I have a quick, so what's next? The give us a peek behind the curtain. Um, th- this is obviously a wish list. Senator Tarr, in, in as according to a news report in, in Metro News, came out pretty strongly um, against a lot of the spending that's here. So, starting this morning and moving ahead, what are the next steps? Do you say, well, yeah, I know, Governor, you, you want to have you know 30 million dollars for this, we don't have 30 million. How about 12? I mean, is, is that the kind of negotiation that happens after this? Well, the, the next steps are we get ready to look and see what is one-time spends and what is base building. And then we look at the revenues. Then we also got to look at our expenses that was not specifically talked about in the state of the state. Because there are other expenses that you may not be aware of. For instance, BRIM continues to increase. And uh, BRIM is the uh, state insurance policy that we have here at State Aid. We're looking at redoing BRIM, uh, but it's a matter of getting there on it. So the, the, what it is, the committees now will start going through and looking at this. The chairman will do that, and there will be negotiations from here to the last day of the session. Speaking of that, on the last day of the session, 60-day session, we're going to have a trade show. And that is, is all the businesses in the state of West Virginia is going to be encouraged to come to the Capitol, set up their booths, bring their vendors and suppliers, and come and, and, and talk to the legislators, but also talk to each other, and then send the message out to corporate America that West Virginia truly is open for business and that we want you to bring your jobs here. Because when those jobs come, then you got a tax base to do things like what the governor's state of the state was. Matt Harvey, final question for Senator Blair. Uh, it would have to be about the tax cuts. To, is that another 10%? Does that look like that's going to hit? Uh, I don't know that yet either because there's a trigger mechanism that's built into it. The maximum tax reduction without legislation would be 10%. It could be, depending on what it is or what our number's coming out to be, it could be 5%, it could be 7%, it could be 2%. Uh, So we don't really know where we're at on those. I'm predicting that we're going to trigger 10 
And if we trigger 10, that's $250 million. I didn't realize it was a sliding scale. It was, yes. I thought it was all or nothing. It can go up to 10. Up to 10. It's capped at 10. But it can stop yes. in between where the trigger points it. Uh, Correct. Uh, Craig, lastly, before we let you get to your caucus meeting, uh, you've been through this now being the eighth uh, Governor Justice State of the State speech. Uh, typically, from what he throws out as a wish list, how much of that actually becomes reality? Between third and a half. Okay, that's fair. Uh, and I'm to be honest with you, I'm sort of guessing on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we try to work together and and do what you know the governor wants to do, but we do what we can afford. And sometimes that puts us in tough situations. If you remember, you know when the governor served us up the silver platters of cow dung, we do because we wouldn't pass a huge tax increase. And so there was friction there that uh, that we could end up friction here. We're not going to put ourselves into a situation that is going to undermine the future of further tax reductions and further economic growth in the state of West Virginia. And we're wanting to do it across the board. We don't want to pick winners and losers. Uh, We're we're wanting to make it so that if you're in West Virginia, we want to make it so that you can be successful. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I appreciate it. I know you got stuff to do today. I hope you feel better. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Have a good day. Senate President Craig Blair off to the 8.30 Senate caucus meeting. They used to caucus at uh, 7.30, but now they do it at 8.30. And I think Craig explained to us last time, uh, because of Donna Boley, she said, I'll, I'll run for Senate again if we get rid of those 7.30 caucus meetings. I think Craig told us that story last time he was on. So I should tell that to Hornby. <laughs> it, it certainly resonates with me. 